This is Will Nunziata, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film. And today I am thrilled to be speaking with the acclaimed photographer and filmmaker, the one and only Travis Howes. Hello, Travis. How are you? I'm doing well, and thank you for having me today. Oh, Travis, I'm so excited. We are finally meeting. You are a Renaissance man. I want to know first and foremost, Travis, where were you born? And when did you realize, first and foremost, that you had a love of the arts and specifically both photography and films? Well, I was born and raised in Washington, DC. So a lot of my heart and ideas came from living within the DC area. So a lot of it was getting inspiration from the culture, from the music scene, and also some of the filmmaking scene that's been growing over the years. My mom used to always be really big into photography when she was in high school. So I took a lot of like those traits essentially because she used to carry like her own cameras and stuff like that to class all the time. And I was like, I just want to do it too. I want to see what it's like to get that experience. I love it. Now let's lean into your photography. I'm looking at your stuff right now. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, first of all, you're, when people will go to all of your links right below this video. They will see that you do so many different types of photography, but even when you're doing portraits of people, you don't only just offer them the normal straight on shot, you create art out of it. Talk to me a little bit about how you are able to tailor make for people their portraits, for example. Usually I start off with the first question is, what is it that you want to see yourself as? Because a lot of times, like I could present, you know, a, like the usual portrait, you know, someone's shoulder to the side and have it like very conventional. But I've learned as time goes on that there are places that do that, but you come to me for a specific reason. And it's not, you know, not to be like super egotistical or anything, but just in the sense of you want me to say, okay, I want you to make this portrait, but I want you to do something different, kind of see it in a different angle. So I've been more recently going into like more lens distortion kind of effects lately. So more recently I've adapted this kind of like kaleidoscope effect where I was able to take a shot where you can see the model, like their regular face, but the lens, the lens itself is so distorted. So then that way it kind of gives like a reflection of multiple faces around them or certain movement around them. So it actually gives a little bit more of the viewer to get, to get a chance to see something to look at differently. So a lot of it is just really taking that time to sit down and like try different things and try different elements and experiment to see what comes best out of it. And people can also just tell based upon your photos alone, of course, it just makes sense that you would naturally also go into filmography. I mean, you have such a cinematic eye. I'm sure you've been told that even before you went into film. I'm curious of the films that you're working on now, are there any that you're most excited to maybe give us a little sneak peek behind the scenes about? Yeah, so one I actually have, which is very, very soon, it is a film entitled 846, which is an anthology film that I worked on with 10, with nine other directors, so it was 10 all together, and we proclaim ourselves as five king directors, five male directors, essentially, and five queen directors, which are five female and non-binary directors as well. And we all told different stories from a social justice point of view. My story is involving a lot of conversations between two brothers, essentially, which I can't give away too much about, but it is very much the deal of what happens in a post, in a post society of the interests of social justice. What are the conversations that are being had also as well? And I'm really looking forward to it because we've already finished most of the production. So in June, 2022, I'm hoping that that conversation can definitely bring forth when it is available. You're an amazing storyteller, Travis. I wanted to let you know that you're, you're telling stories, not only through your photography, for your clients. And again, people need to hire you ASAP because you're not only doing portraits, you're doing these beautiful remote um, tethered shoots, giving them kind of their, their Hollywood glam dreams come true. You are not only creating beautiful films, 
with messages of social justice and positive reinforcement. But I do want to, surprise question, talk mm -hmm. to you a little bit about this amazing, amazing creative other side of you in terms of Midnight Season. Talk yes. to me a little bit about Midnight Season. Okay, so the abbreviated version of it was in 2011, I, I've i always been fascinated with albums. Like I decided I wanted to create a project, but I never wanted it to be like the immediate forefront, like, oh, there's gonna be a lot of different music over, over the years. But when I, when I started in 2011, I did it originally as a therapy project because there were certain things within myself that I wanted to kind of take on head on, mostly particularly, just like certain things internally. And when I started it, I wasn't 100% motivated. I didn't really get a chance to really like get it to where I wanted it to be sonically. But it wasn't until earlier this year, and I think the pandemic also kind of helped shift that idea of saying, okay, here's what's gonna happen. By June, I'm gonna finish this project. I'm not gonna think about it too deeply. I want it to just be as natural and as organic as possible. And I wanna know what it is that can come out of it. When I started hearing, when some of my friends started hearing some of it, they were like, yeah, you need to publicly make this available. And I originally wasn't going to, it was just gonna be kind of like a, you know, little archive project that I just kind of kept hidden. But I decided to publicly make it available and to see the response it's gotten has been amazing. Like I've gotten people who have actually purchased physical CDs from the album as far as in the up and down the East Coast to even as far as Oregon and California, there's like CDs pretty much everywhere. And just being able to have that just really just like surprised me, but also warned me because I just couldn't imagine how it could have turned out. Well, it's not a surprise to me, my friend, because you are a renaissance man. You obviously are a, an amazing storyteller that whatever medium you shine your light and craft with and through, you're gonna succeed. I'm just so excited you're joining this amazing new social media app where you're going to as a photographer, a filmmaker, a musician, a creator, and true, you're a true artist that you're gonna be able to connect with artists now all over the world, Travis. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so excited for your, I'm so grateful for your time. And I'm so excited that we are now connected, Travis. Thank you so very much. Oh, thank you so much and thank you for having me and giving me the chance to learn about this app. It's been amazing to see what can be done within it and how you can actually share your information to other artists, not just, you know, within my area, but even just like around the world. Like, And I think that being able to have that opportunity just helps push creatives so much further as well. So being able to be a part of that is truly, truly grateful for that. Amen, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.